My plans for today were originally to make my preview and predictions for the Stanley Cup Finals, but Jordan Eberle had other ideas and the Islanders have now extended that series. There will be a game six and hey, more hockey is more hockey. I'm not going to complain about it, but I didn't just want to not make a video today. So late last night, I asked you guys for some bold NHL opinions and predictions that you guys have because I wanted to react to some in a video. So that is exactly what we are going to do today. These these videos where your guys' comments are featured and we're kind of able to interact a little bit are always some of my favorite to make, so if you guys want to see another video just like this one, then let's try and hit 1,000 likes on this video. I definitely think you guys can do it. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and check out my gaming channel if that's something that interests you. Links to all of those will be down below in the description, and as always, if you guys are new to this channel and you want to see more NHL content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and now let's begin. The first comment of the video comes from DeBoss YT who says bubble hockey continues for next season. Honestly, I would have to agree it's probably the safest bet. I mean, it's worked to perfection so far for the Stanley Cup playoffs, and I think a lot of hockey fans have enjoyed it. Yes, we all know hockey is better with fans in attendance. It's more electric, especially playoff hockey, but I would rather hockey with no fans and in a bubble than no hockey at all, and I'm sure all you guys would agree with that. Moving along now to the next comment, this one comes from BarrowdownBreaks97, who says the New York Rangers don't take Lafreniere. This one is definitely bold, and I'm gonna say there's no chance that the Rangers pass on him. The hype surrounding Lafreniere, not even just this season alone, but the past like two and a half to three seasons has been insane. Everybody knew he was gonna be the first overall pick in the 2020 draft for a couple of years now. While the 2020 draft is looking like it is going to be an extremely deep draft, there are a ton of other amazing prospects aside from Lafreniere. I still just don't see a scenario where he doesn't get taken with the first overall pick. Let's say the Rangers do take somebody else first overall, and then Lafreniere goes somewhere else and becomes the player that everybody expects him to be. I mean, Jeff Gordon would probably lose his job because of that. It would be interesting to see happen just because of the pure chaos that would ensue after it, but it's it's not going to happen. The next comment comes from Kings Creations who says Alex Petrangelo signs with the Winnipeg Jets. Well, right now the Winnipeg Jets have about 15 and a half million dollars in cap space, which is definitely a lot, but they also do have a lot of things that they need to get done. Jack Roslevic needs a new contract, Mason Appleton needs a new contract, and they also have a lot of UFAs as well. And if they want to bring some of those guys back, well then they're going to have to spend some of that money. Realistically, yes, they probably could sign Alex Petrangelo low but then they kind of just be right back in the position they were in before Dustin Bufflin's contract got terminated up against the cap and not having a lot of flexibility. And when you look ahead to next offseason for this Winnipeg Jets team, I think it would be in their best interest if they save a lot of the cap space they have right now because Patrick Laine, Andrew Kopp, and Neil Pionk are all going to be RFAs and probably all need a raise. While yes, I do think Alex Petrangelo would be an amazing fit in Winnipeg, he's kind of exactly what that team needs. With the roster that they have right now, I don't think it'd be a smart move. Maybe if they traded the guy like Nikolai Ehlers, then they could make it work. But with what they have right now, I don't really see it happening. The next comment comes from Cameron Sondheim. Hopefully I'm saying your name properly, but they say Barzell gets an offer sheet that the Islanders can't match. Now this is pretty interesting. I wouldn't say the Islanders should be worried about this offseason, but their cap situation isn't necessarily ideal either. Their projected cap space is about $8.9 million, and they have to re-sign their best forward in Matthew Barzell and arguably their best defenseman in Ryan Pulock. Matthew Barzell can demand a lot of money, especially when you look around the league at some of the other contracts that have been given out to young players. He should probably be asking for $8 million or more. I can't really see him getting anything less than that. And then Ryan Pulock, I mean, four and a half to five million, probably somewhere in that range. Like they don't have the money to do that exactly right now. So maybe they do have to make a move. Maybe they have to shed some cap somewhere in the lineup. Obviously that isn't where the Islanders focus is right now. They're still competing. They're in game six of the Eastern Conference Finals. But as soon as that's over, their priority should be getting Matthew Barzell signed because it would be difficult for them to match if a team threw a crazy offer sheet at Barzell 
sell, and you never know what could happen. Moving along now, next up we have a comment from Matthew C who says somebody will score 70 goals in a single season in the next three years. As much as I would like for this to happen, and there's a lot of talented goal scorers in the league obviously that can put the puck in the net, but this isn't going to happen. I mean, the last time we saw somebody score 60 in a season was Steven Stankos back in 2011-2012, and he just barely got it. 70 goals though, that is insane. I think the last time somebody scored 70 was Timu Solani's rookie season back in the 90s. That was a long time ago. Never say never, but if I had to put money on it, I don't think it's going to happen. The next comment we have comes from Sakunos. I hope I'm saying that name properly, but they say Ovechkin, Pasternak, or Dreisaitl won't win the Maurice Richard next year. I like this one because while yes, it is kind of bold, there is a really, really good possibility that this might happen. Like there's so many other talented goal scorers in the NHL. I could see Austin Matthews winning it. Could definitely see a guy like Patrick Laine scoring at the rate he did in his first two seasons, breaking the 50 goal mark and winning the Rocket Richard. You know, I could definitely go on and name a couple more guys I could see winning it, but you guys get the point. And this kind of segues into the next comment, which comes from Fantastic Films, who says Debrinkit will score 50 goals in his career. I'm sure he just means at some point, and I definitely would not be surprised if this happens. Alex Debrinkit is only 22 years old, and don't let this season where he only scored 18 goals make you forget how good of a goal scorer he really is. I mean, he had 41 in the 2018-19 season. So I'm going to go ahead and agree with this one. I would say some point in his career, he'll probably break the 50 goal mark in a season. Moving along now to the next comment, you can see the name on the screen. I'm not going to try to say this one. I always feel really bad when I mispronounce names and stuff like that, but they say the Red Wings don't finish dead last, and I definitely like the way you think. I'm going to go ahead and agree with this one, and no, it's not all because I'm a Red Wings fan. I mean, sure, that's playing a little bit into why I'm agreeing, but it is rare that an NHL team finishes dead last back-to-back -back years. I'm pretty sure the last time that happened was Buffalo in 2014-15 and in 2015-16. Sorry, Buffalo fans, I know I'm probably giving you PTSD there because you didn't get the first overall pick in either of those seasons, but I'm definitely going to go ahead and take my chances and say that Detroit will not be dead last in the NHL next year, which is still keeping my expectations relatively low. Continuing on now, we have a comment from Rugged English who says teams are given up to two compliance buyouts after playoffs. I would love if that happened. I don't think it is going to happen. It could be on the table just because of how the cap is going to be affected by the virus and everything like that. As a Red Wings fan, I mean, if we could buy out Franz Nielsen and Justin Abdelkader, count me in. But again, I don't really see this happening. There's a lot of bad contracts in the NHL, and I feel as though this would kind of give teams too easy of a way out. Next up, we have a comment from Eric Rice who says Toronto makes a move on Darcy Kemper. Now, this is definitely an interesting conversation to have. Arizona recently signed Aiden Hill to a contract extension, and it's a one-way contract as well, which means he won't be playing in the American Hockey League, and I don't think they would have signed him to a one-way deal if their intentions were to bring back both Darcy Kemper and Auntie Ranta. So yeah, I definitely wouldn't be surprised if Darcy Kemper is moved from Arizona in the offseason, and Toronto can definitely be a team that is interested. We knew they were going to have a busy offseason. They already traded Kapanen, and if I had to guess, I would say they're probably still going to make a couple more moves. And Frederick Anderson definitely isn't safe. He was on the TSN trade bait list. He has had his name in trade rumors a good bit since the season ended. Apparently, Calgary and Carolina are interested in him, so Toronto could definitely have a new goaltender by next season. Next up, we have a comment from Drango Feet who says Cole Perfetti will slip out of the top 10 of the draft order. Every year, there are players that rise in the draft and there are players that fall. I'm guessing it'll probably be the same case this year, but I really don't see Cole Perfetti being one of the guys that fall, especially fall out of the top 10. I've been seeing a lot of things saying that the Red Wings are really considering taking Cole Perfetti at number four. So if that's the case and he could potentially go as high as number four, really don't see him dropping out of the top 10. Cole Perfetti, I think is a can't miss talent. Moving along now, we have another comment about one of the top prospects for the 2020 draft, the Real Shaggy says Marco Rossi doesn't make the NHL for at least two years after being drafted. This is definitely a possibility. We see it happen a ton with guys that aren't drafted in the top three. Sometimes it takes them a couple years to develop and make the NHL. And if I had to guess, I would say Marco Rossi probably won't be a top three pick. I definitely think whatever team ends up with Marco Rossi will be happy with him. I would not be mad whatsoever if Detroit took him with the fourth overall pick. His upside is just astronomical. He dominated the OHL 
well this year. However, he isn't one of the prospects in the 2020 draft I would say that people view as being NHL ready and can come in and make an impact right away. I wouldn't be surprised if he does, but I also wouldn't be surprised, yeah, if like you said, he takes a couple of years to develop and finally make the NHL. Alrighty, moving along now, this comment comes from Mimo who says, a random team will go and sign Krug, like the Devils are wings simply because they have cap. If I had to make a prediction on what's going to happen with Tory Krug, I would say probably re-signs in Boston, but if he doesn't and they can't make it work, then yeah, a team like the Red Wings or Devils definitely could because like you said, they have cap space and that's something not a lot of teams have this offseason. I have seen a good amount of people predict that Tory Krug will end up in Detroit after free agency. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm talking about Detroit a lot in this video. I just can't help myself. There wasn't a lot to talk about when it came to this team this season, so when I find reasons to, I like to talk about them. Tory Krug is from Michigan. He played college hockey at Michigan State. Like, there's some reason to think he could end up there. That and, of course, the cap space. Honestly, I think a lot of it just comes down to what does Tory Krug value most right now? Does he want to cash out and get a massive contract? Well, if that's the case, it's not going to happen in Boston. And if he wants to still compete for a Stanley Cup and be on a good team, well, then he's not going to go out and sign with a team like Detroit or even New Jersey. So I'm interested to see what happens with Tory Krug, and we're just going to have to wait and see. Okay, guys, the last comment comment of the video comes from Hockey King 34 who says Lafreniere doesn't win the Calder. This is another really good one because Lafreniere will probably be the favorite for the Calder heading into the 2020-21 season, but there is a very, very good chance that he won't win it. I mean, last season, a lot of people thought Kako and Jack Hughes would be in the conversation, but neither of those guys were finalists or weren't even close to being in the conversation for the Calder. There is going to be a lot of good rookies in the NHL next season, I would guess. Byfield and Stutzla, I think they're going to play right away, and even guys that were drafted in previous drafts that just haven't played a full season yet. You know, Bowen Byram is eligible for the Calder. I think Barrett Hayton is still as well. I'm going to go ahead and be bold with you. I'm going to predict that somebody other than Laugh will win the Calder next season. But yeah, guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. I've really enjoyed making this. So like I said, at the start of the video, if we can hit 1000 likes, then I will definitely do another video exactly like this, where I take a look at some of your guys' opinions and predictions. These are a lot of fun. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave it a like. That is, as always, the best way to show your support. And if you guys are new to the channel and you want to see more NHL content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will catch you guys all in the next video.